I'm Ray Howard. I'm Diego Tejeda. I'm Richard Henshaw. And we're Hayden. And you're watching Live Frog. Hashi here from LifeProc. Um, time for a new review and in this review I am bringing you a debut album of a well band that only recently started. Uh, they were formed in 2011 so they are only around for a couple of years um, and of course they've been working very hard the past time writing and recording their debut album. Which one? Well I give you Withem from Norway and the album is called Point of You. Interesting cover, as you can see. I hope you can see it. This eye, and then it kind of spirals in. Sort of a, you know, weird Asher kind of thing going on uh, in the cover. All to describe, you know, the point of view, point of view, point of view. Play on words, maybe I don't know. It is about the music, progressive metal. That is what this band is bringing. That is a big challenge but they bravely stepped up and they say with this album we are going to conquer the prog metal community you know we worked hard we wrote an album last year i reviewed uh, well quite a few prog metal albums uh, all really interesting albums you know really adding something to the genre making it interesting to listen to so it's been a while since i reviewed a heavier album so you know i was curious about this one show it to you again point of view with him very important i mean Gotta promote the bands a little bit, of course. Uh, here's the rear, and there you see something strange. You see this sticker, while well, you see the reflection of my view screen in it from my camera, of course, because, hey, I don't have a camera guy. I just do it all by myself. Um, Bertus, that is the company that sent me a copy of this album. Well, to review and to bring it, share it with you guys. Um, the label that released this album is Sensory Records. You might know it, it's linked to Laser's Edge. Two labels, uh, I believe one more on prog rock and one more on a little bit of metal. Well, we have a little bit of metal in here. Um, I was listening to this album, very curious, and I gotta say, you know, they have a great sound. It, it really sounds very melodic, uh, a very powerful singer. That, that's a selling point of this band, definitely. Nice guitar solos, nice keyboard solos. Uh, at some points in the music, you know, they, they kind of put the pedal to the metal a little bit, make pick up a little bit more speed, bring it a little faster and a little heavier songs. Um, but altogether, main, uh, the main thing that I picked up from this album is that it's all very melodic. But at the same time, you know, I, I have to be a little bit critical. I mean, you expect that from me, I hope at least, you know, not just that I'm just raving about albums and then you can spend all your hard earned cash on every album that I promote to you. Um, I, I had some reservations when I was listening to this album. The way the album sounds, sounded to me a little bit like painting by numbers. Kind of playing it a little bit safe. production and everything is really top-notch. Uh, the, the, the songwriting, you know, the, the sound of the band is very good and I, I really appreciate, you know, they put in a lot of hard work, but I have to pick up something right here. Um, this is something I usually get uh, when a label or a promotion company send me an album to review. They send a, a press sheet with it, a nice Xerox copy. It's very dark so you can hardly read it. It says here a few things and, and it says something here that made me look to this album a little bit more critical than usual and I'll, I'll read you the line and then you might understand it. The unique vocal range of Ole Alexander Virginius gives the band a distinctive touch to tackle the overcrowded progressive metal scene. So 
What the label here says is they know that the progressive metal scene is overcrowded. I mean, just as probably the prog scene is also overcrowded. I mean, nowadays there are so many bands bringing out albums uh, and, and, and trying, you know, to get their share of the audience and of course sell these things because that's why they do it. I mean, let's be honest about it. They'd like to sell some music. And in these days with all that piracy going on, it is not easy. You know, and I say you really have to, you know, stand out. You have to stand out in the crowd to be noticed by the fans and, and bring a nice package so that people buy it. So when I read this, you know, I, I thought, okay, so this guy sings in such a way that it really stands out. So I paid extra attention to the vocals when I was listening to the album. And absolutely, he's a very powerful singer. He has a good range, you know, no criticism whatsoever there. But at the same time, I don't find him particularly stand out. Uh, when I listen to this album, uh, and, and I gotta tell you a little bit more what's on this page, because this page gives me a lot of information uh, which I would almost base my judgment on without even listening to this album. Because it says here, an up and coming Norwegian progressive metal band inspired by the likes of Symphony X, Pagan's Mind, Dream Theater and Circus Maximus. In the selling points, which is here, it's a list of selling points, uh, it says that, you know, they, they have some kind of producer who did a good job. Well, production wise, absolutely fantastic. The sound of the band is really fantastic. But, um, you know, they say it, it resembles uh, Symphony X, Dream Theater, Circus Maximus. Yeah, and that is exactly the problem. It resembles these other bands too much. It is definitely inspired by those bands, but you know, those bands have been going on for many years, uh, have gathered a following um, and have a certain kind of sound. And, and now this band comes in and, and does not stand out in between them. And, and that makes it very hard for them, you know, to get a market share. I mean, I, I really hope that there will be a lot of fans picking up on this band and, and liking the music and buying the album and not downloading the album because well you know any initiative of a new band uh, trying to re uh, release an album uh, you know if it's downloaded immediately pirated then you know you kind of destroy all hopes for such a band so you know if you like this music and you hear some samples in my review um, and, and I don't absolutely this is not a bad album don't get me wrong about that it's absolutely a good album it's well played it's well produced um, but the only problem I have with it is it, 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 it sounds too much like so many other prog metal bands that I have heard. So uh, in, that, in that way and also the vocals, I mean, yes, absolutely, but, but put this guy next to Russell Allen. I mean, they compare themselves to Symphony X, put this guy next to Russell Allen and everybody will attend, everybody's attention will be on Russell Allen. The trick here, if you inspire yourself by other bands, you have to risk that you don't stand out anymore. And, and it is better to try and create your own musical identity. Fortunately, there is hope, because there was one song on this album that stood out for me. You know, that was a moment when I heard that song and I thought, you know, okay, this is interesting. The Paramount of Lies, that is the longest track on the album. I mean, most of the songs are around five minutes. There's one, this track, Paramount of Lies, is about seven minutes. It's the longest track on the album. I mean, the total playing time of the album is around 50 minutes. So it's a relatively short album. Um, but that track showed some, you know, kind of hope for the future. If, if they move a little bit more in that direction, uh, they might, you know, stand out a little bit more and be more noticed by others. Because that song, I, I found it a little more adventurous. It had a, a little complexer arrangement than the rest of the songs. Uh, a very symphonic sound, uh, a really nice heavy part in it. So, you know, that, that song had basically everything that I would hope that the rest of the album would have as well. Um, unfortunately, it didn't. So, you know, I, I listened to it, but, but after a while I, I heard it, you know, it's like, all right, nice album, but it's not more than nice, unfortunately. Uh, I, I don't give out markings, which is good. 
uh, because this one would unfortunately not get a high mark. It would not get a, a, a bad grade or anything because as I said, you know, it is absolutely a good album. Technically, it's very good. Uh, the guys have a lot of enthusiasm. You hear that in the music. They are, you know, really going for it. So that's why I'm, I'm well, I'm a bit sad that the end result is, is not as good as I would hope from a starting band. I mean, I have heard plenty of debut albums of bands that, that I thought, wow, they had a really wow factor. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have the wow factor. This has more the, yeah, okay, it's a nice album, but nothing more than that, you know? And nothing wrong with that. As I said, you know, I really hope, and I really think that there are a lot of people that will enjoy this album, but unfortunately for me, this probably will end up in my collection behind me uh, and, and I don't know if I'll play it again. I, I really hope so. Maybe, you know, in six months or a year, I will pick out the album and play it again and, and say, oh man, what an idiot that I've been that I've given this album such a, well, so-so re review uh, because the album is awesome. I, it can happen. The problem, of course, with, uh, with, with reviewers, I recently discussed that with a friend is that, you know, re reviewers often get uh, a whole stack of CDs and, you know, you worked hard on this album, you worked hard for a year or more to create your album and you have the album and the reviewer got 20 other albums along with it, you know, and you were just one of the 20 and um, I, I really try to give the album the attention it deserves. I really listen to this album and as I said, you know, I, I definitely heard a lot of good music on it, but it just didn't catch me enough. So. I really hope that these guys will, uh, well, you know, see this not as bashing the album. I don't bash the album, absolutely not. But I try to help them maybe with the next album. They know they can do something to stand out a little bit more. And well, hopefully that will help them to get a larger following, more attention also from others. But hey, I'm just one guy. Uh, one reviewer bringing my opinion to this album. You can check my opinion in the garbage can. That's all fair. I mean, I'm just doing my part here. You decide for yourself. This is my review. You decide whether you like this album or not. With him, the point of view. With him, the point of view. That is my opinion, my review about this album. But I am very curious now. Do you have the album or have you heard the album? And what did you think of it? Did you like it or did you hate it? Let me know, you know, leave some comments on my YouTube channel and tell me what you feel about this album. I appreciate your time in watching this review. Check out liveprog.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and stay up to date. Thanks for watching.